What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another New World video. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the town board uh, just due to the recent changes and stuff that happened in open beta with the significant nerfs and listen, I'm just going to say this up front but I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to nerf certain aspects of the uh, town board at launch. So assuming worst case scenario, meaning that if you were to come in here and finish these quests and get one XP, which is not going to happen by the way, but assuming worst case scenario, understand that the town board or town project board is still amazing for XP, but I think it's meant to be treated as a supplemental tool, meaning that this is something just like some kind of bonus XP that you're going to get on top of doing what you are already doing anyway, instead of a replacement tool. So back in the closed beta, it was a replacement tool, meaning that there was nothing else better in the game than this town board. So if you weren't doing the town board, you are absolutely wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, so looking at the town board, guys, there's some stuff that you want to take into consideration. Just a few tips and techniques that can make this as efficient as possible um, now I will just say right out the gate if you're trying to manipulate the town board or get as much XP as you can from the town board it can help to purchase a cheap house in another starter zone so Windsward Everfall Monarch's Bluff or First Light if you bought a cheap house there for like 2,000 2,500 ish uh, gold then you can kind of fast travel between the towns especially if you're creating multiple storage systems where you're having resources so that way when you clear one town board you just go to the next town board does that make sense you can kind of like flip flop in between this is really really valuable for my crafters out there like pure crafter pure pve this is something that you guys would definitely look at the big thing when we get into the town board is this though you only want to craft relevant things or collect re things that are relevant to you what I mean by that is if you have no idea where goats are, if you guys are looking at the screen here, if you have no idea where the goats are, you're not going to do goats. Does that make sense? However, if you're in Everfall, there's a spot to the southeast that you can find plenty of goats and sheep, all right? But listen, listen, that's, that's, that's my secret. Don't tell nobody, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but the idea here is you want to look at professions and quests that you're going to be doing and this is why it's really helpful to be able to jump between towns if you have the gold available if you don't have the gold available and you're just locked into one place then the primary thing you're going to want to be doing is a finding ways to expand your storage so you know leveling up your reputation which the town board projects will help you do and increasing your backspace <laughs> Okay, but let's say you're a chef and you want to focus on cooking because you want to be the goddamn Bobby Flay of New World. Okay, so if you're looking to be Bobby Flay, then you're going to be looking primarily at things that you can easily accomplish. So if you're cooking light rations, then that's something that you can focus on then those are the quests that you will accept. But if you know you're not blacksmithing or you're not collecting iron, right, for some crazy reason, I don't know why you wouldn't be, definitely should be collecting all the iron that you see, then you can just abandon the mission. And then what'll happen is over a set amount of time, new missions will spawn. So since I'm cooking, I'm gathering rations, I'm gathering meat, I'm out there getting water and stuff like that, cause you know, I might as well just craft potions too while I'm cooking. These are all of the quests that I'm going to take. And vice versa, if I was a blacksmith or armor smith or whatever, or if I knew that I was gathering iron for like engineering or whatever the case may be, then I would be picking up anything that has to do with weapon crafting or would be making my route more efficient. Now, this is also going to apply to everything else. If I'm trying to create an efficient task line, meaning that I know where goats are, I know where elks are, I know where rabbits, I know where turkeys, I know where all these, these things are, then you can kind of set up routes throughout the world. Okay, look, I'm gonna go to the rabbit spot, it's right next to iron, I can grab iron, grab rabbits, grab wood, grab turkeys, and then make my way back, turn in all my quests, and then teleport to whatever town. Or, if I happen to get an easy quest board spawn, meaning like pretty much all the damn quests are the same, then I'll just knock that out. Now, speaking of routes, another way to really optimize is when you guys get these quests for explorers needed to go to like Campbell's Rest or to go to Clearwater Bend, what it can help you do is when you accept those particular location quests, you can head to that location first to kind of scout it out and see what materials are around that area. 
So if there are materials around that area, you can then knock out subsequent town board quests that will also fill in the line. So let's say there's rabbits around there. Let's say there's iron nodes. Let's say there's whatever nodes that are available. This will allow you to create an efficient loop so you can go back and forth. But the idea is to be able to grab as many town board quests as possible that pertain to your particular craft and then just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that way you're not missing out on XP. So for example, in this particular video, I have two quests to go to Campbell's Rest, right? So let's say we head to Campbell's Rest, and while we're at Campbell's Rest, we're going to be looking for key resource nodes that we can find that could also help me complete town board quests. So when I find these things like iron nodes, herbals to make potions, fresh water that I can gather, as well as oil that if my mining is high enough, I'll be able to take advantage of. These are things that I'm going to be looking for. And since some of these locations are really, really far, I'm also going to be looking for fast travel points that I can use to go to and from town, especially if I have Azoth on my tools or Azoth extraction on my tools to help me gather the Azoth that I need and of course shorten my travel time. If there isn't travel points or fast travel points available, I'm going to be even more selective on the location quest that I choose. So for instance, if let's say Campbell's Rest was above my level or too far for me to travel, or Kaufman's was too far away, then I might just opt to skip those and wait for the reset. But again, I would advise exploring these locations so you can see what resources are available because as you guys saw with Campbell's Rest, we can knock out iron there, we can knock out oil there. Oil does appear on the town board quest quite frequently. You can also do some gathering and stuff around there to get crops, to create food, which would take care of your rations. But again, efficiency is key when looking at the town board and learning how to manipulate the most effective route to getting the most XP possible. But now let's get into the pitfalls uh, because there are some other things that you guys might not be aware about with the town board. Now, I need you guys to understand that although doing the early quests for like the light rations and collecting, you know, 500 green wood and or turning in 40 iron bars can be, you know, somewhat lucrative and fast and so on and so forth. You could also be shooting yourself in the foot as well at the same time. So I want you guys to be aware of this. So the big thing you also want to look at is as you level up your base professions, specifically refining and your crafting abilities. What's gonna happen is the town board quest will start to change. So what I mean by that is, let's say you're leveling up your cooking. In the beginning, it might just be light rations, but then the recipe might advance to something else. And if you've been collecting materials efficiently as you've been in the world, this should be a smooth transition. If you're looking at blacksmithing or weaponsmithing or armor smithing, then the armaments that you're crafting might not be iron armaments anymore, where you just use raw iron. You, then you're moving up to using iron bars or steel bars or star metal. And this is something that you guys have to be aware of because it can be both a blessing and a curse. A blessing because you have a lot of XP that you can obtain, but if you don't have access to the advanced materials, then you could be bottlenecking yourself and ruining your quest board creating a situation where you're unable to turn in certain quests because the supply doesn't match the demand. So that's something that you want to be aware of. So please pay attention to how you're managing your materials, how you're upgrading your abilities, how your materials are keeping up with those abilities. So when you do transfer into higher grade town board quests to get even more XP, you can still keep the same level of efficiency as you move forward and if you know that you're going to be moving say from iron bars to steel bars producing large or vast amounts of charcoal in preparation and or hitting all the iron nodes that you can can be a valid strategy in preparation for all the things that are to come but with that being said guys that's all i wanted to cover today i just wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about the town board quest even though they've been nerfing them and adjusting the uh xp to make sure that they weren't extremely overpowered like they were in the closed beta if you guys got any questions comments concerns definitely let me know in the comment box below and i'd be happy to assist and we will see you guys in the next video peace